Oh, oh, we're rolling. Notice anything different? Yeah, that's right. We here at the plug are now working with Dirt Bike Rider magazine to bring you the latest news, gossip, and lowdowns in the motocross world, and to get you properly plugged in. We've had a pretty hectic weekend in the motocross universe, with the AMA circuit visiting Southwick for the final time, and the GP saga visiting Sweden for the weekend, and in the UK, the Red Bull Pro Nationals held their third round at Cullen Park. Just quickly, here's this week's top five big ups. Firstly, to my little buddy Tom Grimshaw for some more awesome results at the Red Bull Pro Nationals. Next, to our own prodigy rider Nathan Watson for some solid results at the European MX2 races, getting seventh overall. Also, to Jordan Eccles for some outstanding moto wins at the Red Bull Pro Nationals. Next, to Dan Thornhill for his winning the super competitive Red Bull Pro National Rookie Class. And finally, to Jack Gregorich for his first ever two-stroke open win in the Red Bull Pro Nationals. Seeing as I've got this DBR in my hand and Sean Simpson's on the cover, let's start with him and the GPs. After his mid-season change of teams last week, swapping his TM for a Yamaha, Sean Simpson put in a really impressive ride in the qualifying race to get fourth on the grid position. However, he didn't have as much good fortune in the races that count on Sunday. But unlike Tony Cairoli, who went 1-1 on the day after having a pretty average qualifying race, for Tony Cairoli standards anyway. Cairoli really turned up the heat this weekend. He looked like he was having loads of fun. Didn't look like his knee was bothering him too much. Uh-oh. This could be a problem for the rest of his competitors. After his pair of DNFs in 2012, Caroli's finally got redemption over Udavala. I can really see him going on a win streak now, just like he did this time last year. The second MX1 race yesterday may well have been the best race of the weekend. Caroli, the Dikers, sailed the sail, all tangled in a four-man battle the entire race, with only three seconds separating them at the finish line. Although the standout ride here definitely came from Tommy Sell, who was mixing it up with the big boys and showing his true potential as an MX1 rookie. And luckily for us British fans, he seems to be finding his stride just as we're fast approaching the MX of Nations. Despite this awesome ride, Sell must have been left heartbroken on Sunday night after he's penalised and docked 10 positions for jumping on the way of yellow. However, in Sell's defence, he's been quoted as saying that the flagger was in a blind position until he's fully committed to the jump. You can find a nice little article on this story on dirtbikerider.com. What's done is done. A real shame for Tommy Sell, but he definitely seems to be stepping up his game in MX1. In MX2, the hurling show continues. Just a quick congrats to Christophe Charlier on his first Moto win yesterday. Despite Charlier's impressive riding in Moto 1, the only thing I wanted to watch was Hurling to rip through the pack. It's just so exciting and interesting to watch. His line choices, his corner speed, the way he scrubs, the way he takes the jumps, everything he does is just exciting to watch. Hurling's had Moto 2 under control. He has his teammate Jordi Tixier to thank for holding off Christophe Charlier in Moto 2 and handing him the overall win. Tixier wins the best teammate award this week for keeping Jeffrey Hurling's win streak alive. It is nice to see some team spirit, but do we really want to be seeing too much of this F1 style team racing in the motocross GPs? What do you think? The last ever national race at the historic Southwick track started off with a bang. James Bubba Stewart was back! He ripped the whole shot and he was stretching away from the field till BAM! A James Stewart S crash took him out of the equation for race one. But he'd be back for race two. I can't help but think what's going through Stewart's mind as he seems to be having these pretty big get offs every single week. Is it time for him to call it a day before he has a major crash and injures himself? Or is it just a few things on the bike setup that he needs to iron out? The long term James Stewart fan inside me wants to see him out there racing up the front because you just can't deny that the Duke can still do some things on a bike that no one else in the world can even imagine. The eventual winner of the 450 race, as you already probably know, is Ryan Dungey. But the standout ride for me definitely came from Ryan Villapoto. From a first corner crash and being 30th on lap one, to be within a few seconds of the lead when the checkered flags flew. Actually, it was pretty similar to the charge that Hurlings put in this weekend. Thinking about it, when you compare the two riders, they're actually very similar. They have that same aggressive attacking style with that insane corner speed, and they bring a level of intensity to the race that no one else does. In the 250 class, Ken Rocks and Eli Tomac again trade blows in the fight for the 250 title. But I think a more interesting rivalry that starts to grow is between the two rookies, Adam Cincerello and Cooper Webb. They seem to find each other every moto and just duke it out. It's interesting. A real indication of what the future of American motocross will look like. I can see both of these riders having majorly successful careers and there being a fierce rivalry between them throughout. Who are you rooting for? Are you an AC guy or are you a Webby guy? Let me know. In my opinion, there's two real standout stars from this weekend's action. Firstly, Southwick. This historic track has been on the AMA circuit since 1976. I first remember seeing and hearing about Southwick in the original Great Outdoors. And I've spun many laps around this track, 
on an MX Superfly featuring Ricky Carmichael on my PS2. It will be sorely missed. The reason behind the track's closure is said to be due to the promoters of the track not being able to come to agreements with the landowners of the track and subsequently retiring, which equals no more national at Southwick. Although it's not that clear, I've seen a few different articles giving different explanations and theories behind the track's closure. If you want to check them out yourself, I'll put a link to the articles below. Either way, it's a real shame. I personally look forward to this race every year. It spiced things up a little bit, made things a bit more interesting. It added a little something extra to the championship fight, because you never know what's going to go down at the wick. And I think we all would have loved to see Herlings race around that track. There would have only been one winner, the fans. The second star of the weekend has to be the junkyard dog, John Dow. What a hero. The guy is 47 years young. He still rips. He got national points on the toughest track in America. And he can actually say that in his last ever professional race, he battled with the champ, Ryan Villapoto. That's like the 47-year-old Mike Tyson of today, going 12 rounds with Floyd Mayweather. Imagine that. Junkyard dog, we salute you. If you like the show, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And don't forget to check out dirtbikerider.com for all your latest motocross news. And if you want to see more, click right here to see more. What's your favourite Southwick memory? Use the comment section below to let me know.